Hey guys, it's such a gift to have um, the one and only Jerry Lorenzo with us tonight. Jerry, it's so good to have you at Team Night. Good to see you, man. Thank you for uh, thinking about me, having me here. Well, um, we're, we're always praying for you and your family and so grateful for you guys. And, and, and it's just been so much fun getting to know you and getting to know um, the, the, the whole entourage of family and friends that um, surround your universe. And it's amazing when I, um, when I announced that we we're going to have you in this time of conversation, so many people instantly just wanted to be a part of this, um, this time. But what I wanted to do is I, I just kind of wanted to talk about you a little bit, not, not you, the, uh, the designer, not you, the founder of Fear of God. Uh, we'll get to all that. And I, I just want to know a little bit of your own story. You know, I, I know you can't give us your whole story, but if, if you were going to like give us the foundation of who you've become as a person, you're growing up, where you come from, your family a little bit, could you just give us a little highlights of your own story? Oh man, how do I put this all in a nutshell so it doesn't take up the whole time? I'm, I'm pretty old, so I, it, it could take <laughs> up the entire time. Um, I grew up in a baseball family. My dad's in baseball, so we traveled a lot and didn't necessarily, um, one of the things that was tough as a kid was, um it was one traveling a lot and moving a few times um and when I, I remember when i when i finally got to college and everyone's like where are you from and i would name you know three or four different cities and was kind of frustrated not necessarily to have a place to kind of call home um uh uh through college i played baseball and um uh, all through college I, I worked retail and after i grad graduated college i uh, went back to work retail and kind of put myself through grad school, um, moved to Los Angeles, um, and finished my MBA with, uh, with the hopes of, uh, getting a front office job in sports, um, cause I wasn't good enough to play. Uh, but during that whole time I had, you know, for the past, you know, six years of that time I had been working in retail and had always loved fashion and retail came a lot easier to me than, uh, the front office job that I had uh, with the Dodgers, which was my first job uh, at a grad school back in uh, in uh, 2003 or so. But um, long story short, um, you know, I, I I started the brand Fear of God um, in I guess about seven or eight years ago, and when I started it, I had no. Um, uh, formal training or um, had never gone to design school or, or, or thought that I could have a, uh, a valid uh, proposition or position within this industry. But I had a heavy conviction um, from being on my feet and working retail all those years as to what was missing in the marketplace. And uh, because at the time I had a lot of friends who had streetwear brands who were printing on tees and hoodies, um, the idea of having a brand didn't seem so tough. And although my perspective for a brand was not necessarily the graphic on the T, but the shape of the T, um, I, I, I went downtown and, and, and kind of learned and, and, and taught myself the process. And um, what had been my part-time part for most of my life, I kind of turned into my full-time. And that's kind of, and, 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 and the reason I, I started off uh, about the baseball family and kind of traveling so much is I've, I've been so blessed to live in so many different cities and I've been able to pull, um, you know, from the different cultural nuances of those, of those places uh, as we grew up. And so what, what was really a frust frustration as a kid turned out to be one of, uh, one of my strengths, um, mm -hmm. being able to you know, pull from the nuances of Chicago or Montreal or South Florida or the West Coast and California and to um, kind of merge all these um, nuances into a language uh, in, in, in clothing. Um, and one of the things uh, I, think, uh, I, I think is so interesting about you is that you're very competitive. You, you come from an athletic family. Yeah. And so you love sports. You, your kids love sports. And, 
And I, yeah. I think that you, uh, you may love your kids playing sports but even more than they love playing sports. And, yeah. And, and uh, how does um, growing up in a competitive home where sports were so much a part of your culture, how does that affect the way you think and interact now that you're in the world of fashion? Oh man, it's such a, a great and, and kind of timely um, question as we're watching the, the greatest competitor of all time and Michael Jordan. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I've always said I've never been the best at any of the sports that I played, but I've always been able to compete. You know, whether it was a pickup game of basketball, whether it was baseball in college or football, um, never the best on the field, but I, I've always been, you know, the guy you got to keep your eye on, you know, because I can beat you if you don't, you know, and so um, I've, I've taken that um, competitive spirit with, and it, it lives in, in kind of, um, um, uh, bring, uh, come, comes to the forefront of, of everything that I touch and everything that I do. And so even within clothing and, and, and fashion, I'm, I'm, um, I'm not necessarily competing with my peers. I, I find myself competing with myself to say the best, uh, thing that I can possibly say with the, with the resources that God has given me. And, um, I'm, uh, consistently and constantly trying to, um, be better than I was yesterday. Um, and, um, what are the reasons that the brand is, is, um, is called fear of God is because it, it, it gives me a, um, an eternal competitive drive to <laughs> tell the story that I believe in, um, even when I may not have a creative direction for this, for the collection, I've got a, I always have a story to tell and I always mm -hmm. feel motivated to, um, to um, uh, show his excellence through 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 what I'm doing, and for for him to uh, be able to show up through this this platform of of clothing, but it's kind of my way in, in honoring and um, and and glorifying the gifts in him through the gifts and talents that he's given me. Mm. That's so 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 good. And in, in a minute, I want to talk a little more about just your own journey of faith. But I I, I just think it's so important. Um, for people to actually pick up that th there's a mythology between um, like athletics and, and artistry, that the athlete's competitive, but the artist is not. And uh, you're, you're, you're an artist who creates and you have seasons and you have deadlines and you, um, you're in a really competitive industry. And uh, I just think it's so fascinating that a part of, I think what makes you so good at what you do is that you have that competitive spirit, not necessarily competing against other people, but always um, fighting to become better yourself and to yeah. compete against your last achievement, to compete against your last standard. And, uh, and I, I find that to be interesting because I also found so fascinating that you have an MBA. Yeah. You know, so if I could just say like, you know, when you think about streetwear, you don't usually think that it's started by a guy um, who is someone associated with Kanye and also he has an MBA. It's almost like if you pull back the cart curtain, you're this really educated, um, really disciplined individual who is known for creativity and artistry, but there's, there's a machine in your mind, in your brain, behind all the creative process. I think, I think the blessing is the discipline. I, I think, you know, I, I hate to call myself educated or creative in some of these um, titles because, you know, the honest, the honest answer is everything that I learned in business school, I forgot, you know. <laughs> What, what, what I took away from getting my MBA was being able to put myself uh, through, through something that I didn't think I was uh, valid or, uh, or talented enough to get through. Mm -hmm. um, I think that process of you know, staying up late and uh, not sleeping for exams the next day and being in the library all night and uh, learning subjects that I failed in high school uh, at the highest level in, uh, uh, in a master's program, uh, those are the things that I've, I've taken with me. And, and yes, it's the competitive drive to, to, to get your master's. It's the discipline in that, that time. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that I've been able to take with me now, um, you know, running and, uh, running a company and, and being a CEO slash, uh, you know, artistic director at the same time. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, it, it is at the root of it. If, if I think about it at the root of it, it is the discipline. It's the discipline and the, and the competitiveness um, that are 
driven um, by the vision that I have that I believe that God has given me. Yeah, you know, I, so many times when people ask you about school, I tell them well, the most important thing to learn in school is to learn how to learn. It's not what you learn. It's yeah. that you develop the discipline of learning and, and of growing and of structuring your life in such a way that you're making progress. And I, I just, um, I, I think that's an interesting nuance because you're really, um, you like to make things uh, simple in terms of elegance, but you're a really complicated person. And, uh, and so I, I think that's an interesting part of your background. You have this athletic background with your dad in professional baseball. And, uh, you know, you have this competitive drive. Then you have this MBA, which normally when you think of the opposite of what an artist would do, you would think an MBA would be sort of the opposite of that. It's developing a life of discipline there. I also know from the people around you that you're an incredibly hard worker, that uh, you're, you're a guy who puts in a lot of hours and you, um, you don't just hope that uh, magic happens and uh, you, you, you almost like you find the magic in the hard work and you have, you're a person of deep faith. You have a really uh, profound relationship with Jesus, um, but your, your faith doesn't eliminate your drive for hard work. Yeah, talk, I talk to me about the, that kind of dynamic of you know, trusting God, believing in God, having faith, but also like the ethic of hard work and, uh, and it, it being a good steward of all your gifts and talents. I think that's exactly it. I mean, I think, I, I think one of the things that God has, has given me, which, which is the greatest gift, gift we could all get, is, is, is vision. Mm. And he gave me a vision for what, you know, fear of God was, is to be. And that vision um allows me to see beyond um time such as now uh, when you can get caught up in consuming information and be clouded by the uh um uh the negativity of now uh the vision allows you to see beyond it mm -hmm. and so i've always had a vision of where i'm going and so in order to honor the vision or and to um um to 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 simply um, honor the gift that he's given me, it I, I know I have to meet him, you know, somewhere through the work, mm. and, I, and I have to um, to put everything in it um, that he's giving me um, physically and uh, humanly um, uh, to 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 show that I'm, I'm I'm worthy of this vision that he's given me. All right, so talk to us about your vision. So help us, uh, unwrap for us your vision for fear of God. Uh, maybe even at the beginning, has the vision changed or has it evolved? Has it clarified or is it uh, the same it was in the first day? Talk to us a little bit about how the vision came to you and what is the vision you're holding on to? Um, the, the, the vision came to me when I realized that there wasn't a singular brand that spoke to me from, a, uh, from what the brand was about, from what it stood for what it stood on to all the way aesthetically um you know head to toe that spoke to the different nuances of of who i was as an individual a lot of uh me growing up as a kid was a kid that had a hard time fitting in you know i didn't fit in that much even with um you know kids of my own color and within my own race and uh, kids outside of my race that were you know into other things that I may have liked, I, you know, it was hard to get in those circles just because I didn't look like them. And so a lot of what I try to do with my fashion is uh, remove the preconceived notions of the room before I walk in with how I look, you know? And so I've been trying to perfect how I present myself kind of my, my whole life in a way that at, at the very least um, relieves the people in the room of any, uh, you know, again, preconceived thoughts of who I might, who I may be or, or who I may not be. Mm -hmm. And it's almost just to, to get on an even playing field with the rest of the world where many people of color feel like we're not uh, at this mm -hmm. uh, level playing field. And so through my fashion, I've tried to get to a place where um, I just want you to kind of look at me as a, as a human. Um, and in doing so, I, um, you never want to be too loud. You never want to be too graphical. Uh, you want to be elegant. You want to be sophisticated. You want to be honest. You want to be uh, chic when you walk in a room. You want to, hey, I'm, I'm going to the gym, but 
but you look like you could potentially be going to a nightclub or, but you're appropriate. So I'm appropriate for wh wherever I may, I may go. And so, so much of my fashion and the nuances of it, again, I, I feel like there wasn't a brand that spoke to that guy, which was, which was me. And so um, I, I, I was convicted that there, there was this hole in the marketplace and then I was also convicted that people would be receptive to something founded on godly principles because at the time there was a lot of Christian-like symbolism in fashion. And so I, I felt like the, the world's appetite for it would be, um, would, would, would be there, but I would, found, I would found what I believe in on truth, not necessarily what could be um, uh, confused with um, trends or crosses or whatever. Like mine's founded in eternity, not necessarily because crosses are in this year or, or, uh, or what have you. And so having this foundation in truth, having this um, point of view on, on, on fashion, uh, having worked in retail all those years and, and knowing kind of what was missing in the market and what people were looking for when they shop, mm -hmm. I, I, I had this conviction and this vision uh, that was just kind of so strong that I, 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 I didn't believe that I couldn't fail, but I believed if I got it right, it would work. Mm. You know? oh, good. And I, was, I was driven to, to, to really get this, and I'm still driven to like perfect it and get it right. And one of the, one of the tough things about creating and, and, and having your work out in the open, especially when you're self-taught, is a lot of the things that I did, you know, maybe six or seven years ago when we started, I'm so far from creatively. Um, and so I'm, I'm also now driven, as you said, in, in competing with and, and elevating where I was last year and elevating my communication through fabrics and through now tailoring and um, uh, footwear and outerwear and different categories that we haven't had a chance to play with up until recently where our resources have allowed us to do so. And now, um, you know, I've been blessed to play in the performance area with Nike and blessed to uh, play at an accessible price point through essentials and um, uh, uh, play at the highest level with, with Xenia and, um, and that level of craftsmanship and, and, and artistry. And so um, being able to touch all these areas that in my mind, all work together simultaneously um, has really been a has, has has been a blessing and is um, in line with what I feel like the vision is that that God gave me for what we're doing. Mm. I remember early on you were sharing with me how um, a part of um, your own process was trying to understand yourself because you are mixed race and you have different cultures flowing through your blood and that sense of identity. Did you find yourself as you were growing up and even creating the brand, both going through an identity crisis in your life or, or more just trying to find a way to communicate your sense of self? Because I, I know that you've tried to find a way to communicate this new reality of being a global person and through your brand. Yeah, I think the conviction finally came once I had the, the, the reality of, of uh, the realization of self. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, and you know, it took me a lifetime, you know, I'm, I'm 42 now. And so the brand really started when I was around 35, which is pretty late in life. Um, and so, but it took a lifetime of, of conviction and understanding my point of view and like waking up and getting dressed every day. And, you know, we all get up and, and, and get dressed every day and we're all actually professionals at it because we make a decision daily of, you know, what we're gonna look like. And so once I realized the DNA of my point of view on, on, on fashion, I, I, I really felt as if it was something that um, was missing from the marketplace. And, you know, T.D. Jakes always says, you know, the way, the reason that you know you could do something is when you see it differently than other people. And I just really felt like I, the way I see it is not necessarily how, um, the world sees it and the irony of that statement is the way that i see it i also feel convicted of is obvious like these are the obvious solutions this is what people want um however i also feel this <laughs> conviction that no one else sees it the way that i see it so it's just kind of this weird you know 
um, it's, it's a weird kind of thought process. That's good. No. So talk to me a little bit about your faith. Um, you grew, did you grow up with faith? Did, did you find yourself struggling with faith along the way in your journey? And, you know, what, what, do you have two or three significant moments in your life that you would say have defined your faith journey? Oh, that, that helps the question. Um, I remember, yeah, I, I remember three moments. Uh, the first moment was um, I was at a, a conference with my mom and um, I remember we were sitting up top like in the rafters somewhere up in Sacramento in one of the arenas up there. And um, I remember for the first time crying um, and really getting hit with, with the spirit as a kid. And maybe I was in maybe like second grade at the time. Um, and then the, the following year, like when I was a, in either third grade or fourth grade, I remember being in church and the offering was coming around and, um, uh, my mom, the offering came to my mom and my mom's like, I can't give this 20. This is all we have. And I was like, no, give it, you know, we'll be okay. Um, you know, God's telling me we'll be okay. And the peace that I had and that I knew we would be okay is one of the few times in my entire life that I felt that heaviness of a peace. Mm. Um, I remember my mom, um, you know, listening and, 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 and giving, and I just remember knowing that we were covered and it was, it, it really was the first time that I felt a peace that passes understanding. And so, um, fast forward, uh, growing up in church my whole life and, um, not necessarily having, um, uh, another strong moment like that that I remember as a child, but I do remember kind of hitting rock bottom in Los Angeles. Um, and this may be about um, about five or six five or six years ago now. Um, you know, and I had been battling with alcohol and some other you know strongholds on my life. Um, and I remember just getting to a place where um, all I had was God. And I went to him and I said, hey, I know I'm not living in a way that um, is glorifying what's, what you've given me. And at that time, I had just started the brand um, called Fear of God. Yet and still, I was out doing things that weren't necessarily too godly. Um, and I said, hey, you know, if, if, this is, uh, if this isn't glorifying you, then take it. But if you, if you allow me to keep this thing, know that I'm going to honor you. And, um, and, uh, that was about five or six years ago. And, um, that has been at the, that I would say really when I kind of changed my, changed my life and changed how I was living and, um, made some, some really big decisions. I don't know that I made big decisions, but I think the vision of where he wanted to take me was so clear that the decisions that I needed to make were so easy to make. Mm -hmm. And I think once you get that vision for your life, um, uh, the decisions, whether they're creative or business or self-help or whatever you need to do, those things kind of become easy and start to take care of themselves. And I think, you know, as we're in this time of crisis, and I know we were going to talk about crisis and creativity, um, I'm just sitting there like, man, like, how, what, what am I going to tell the world? Because I've been trying to figure out <laughs> what to do now as well. But I think. You know, it's it's so ironic that we were all talking about 2020 and vision. Yeah. And uh, you know, 2020 is going to be the year of perfect vision. And then this crisis comes, um, and now that I'm in it, it's it it comes to give you vision. The crisis is here so that you can remove distractions and see where God wants to take you, and you can hear from Him. Um, where he wants to lead you. And I feel like vision is the solution to, um, to creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, vision is this, uh, is the, is the solution that you get or vision is the gift that we gift, uh, that we get from being in this crisis. And so, um, so yeah, I just, um, I, I was really humbled, uh, that God was able to, to kind of intervene in my life and give me a vision that, uh, that would direct me even in times when, when I feel far from him. 
it's so curious that you actually started fear of God before your life was aligning itself more um, intimately with Jesus. Yeah, because you know, because I grew up in church, and it was a it was a real thing to me, and it and it and it's not like it came from a place that was not honest. I mean, the the same way that. Um, Kurt Cobain and Iverson and Jordan have informed uh, what I'm doing creatively. So has, um, you know, my faith. And so it all still was honest at the time, even though my life didn't represent kind of what I was um, uh, proposing to the world. And so um, I, I, it's a great reminder that God doesn't need our chronology <laughs> that, you know, we think that we have to get it all in the right order. But um, but this is I think it's almost like the way sometimes God just reminds us his fingerprints all over our life before our fingerprints are on him. Mm. That, uh, it's almost as if God says, you know, Jerry, don't worry about the chronology. Uh, I, I, I've got you. And some of uh, you step into fear of God and then God grabs a hold of your life in a, in a really life changing way. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And I and I. I always think about that analogy when you were uh, talking to Angela's son, Lorenzo, and explaining to him um, how um, God, you know, stepped out outside of time and space and how he was asking about the people where they go into heaven, um, you know, uh, the people that died, that passed away before Jesus came and you kind of removed Jesus from time and space and kind of gave him this um, visual of how, um, of how you can see the world um, from a different dimension. And I thought that was so interesting. And um, yeah, I, I think we are so kind of caught up in this uh, chronological time that we're susceptible to coming from uh, eternity into time and space. And now we're, we have to live by this chronological time, but that's not necessarily how God operates. And um, there's a piece in that once you're in relationship with him and there's a piece in, in knowing that he's in control, even though seems things may chronologically look like they're going a certain way. However, they're, they're, they're really going in a, in a different direction. Yeah, I remember when somebody asked me how, oh. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, or have already gone in that direction since it's outside of time. It's, it, could, it could get really funny with your mind, but. Yeah, someone asked me my time, well, you know, how's your life changed since Jesus came into your life and said, you know, it's funny, I don't even think of it that way because when, when I had this life-changing encounter with Jesus, I started seeing my life before Jesus differently. I began seeing God all over my life before I actually acknowledged him. And it's not like I, I gave my life to Jesus and now I see God going forward. I gave my life to Jesus and I had new optics, which by the way, in 2020, that's the word I chose. Uh, I said, what we really need for 2020 is new optics, a new way of seeing reality. Wow, did we get a new lens through this pandemic? And, and when, I, uh, when I entrusted my life to Jesus, I felt like God gave me new optics, not just to see the future, not just to see myself, but even to see my past. Mm. And to realize how present God was throughout my life and how grateful I need to be retroactively for all the things I didn't realize he was doing in my life. And all the times I didn't realize that he was standing in my pain or my failure or my disappointment or my confusion. And, yeah. you, you know, well, we are in the middle of a crisis and uh, we're in the middle of a quarantine and a global pandemic. And uh, over 30 million people have lost their jobs and uh, people are really struggling right now, even just with emotional health and well-being. And I did want you to take a few minutes and uh, because I, I don't think it's necessarily about creating in the middle of this crisis. But I think that throughout your eight years with fear of God, you've been creating out of crisis the whole time. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I even remember at one point, if I can share what you said to me, uh, I think it was after the, the Nike collab kind of launched and things were just absolutely blowing up for you in all the best ways possible. And you, and, uh, and you talked about the stress and the strain of success. Yeah. And that you were probably facing your greatest crisis because of success far more than even the crisis of failure. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Oh, man. Um, yeah, it's, it's so funny. I, I met with a friend of mine and, and he, and speaking of the Nike thing, he's like, man, what's so weird is I just never have seen a picture of you just holding up the shoe, laughing and smiling. 
<laughs> like a like like a victory laugh, and I'm like, man, yeah, it's been so heavy. You know, it's 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 been so heavy to uh, be given uh, such a, a a beautiful opportunity and platform to design a sneaker when you when when I grew up. Um, uh, I, I don't want to use the word idolizing, but looking up to someone like Jordan and 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 being able to access or uh, potentially um, have something with his name on it that would give me the feeling where I could just stand taller and to be able to put all of that into a product and offer that back to to a kid uh, that potentially um, is just looking for that one thing to make him feel better or, or, or stand taller. Um, the chasing that emotion is, 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 um, you know, it's draining and it's heavy. Um, and then you're, you're also dealing simultaneously with, um, once that idea is out in the world, the criticism that comes with that, or the, um, the, uh, the love or the hate, whether it's either or, uh, the amount is still a lot. And so, I, I, and I really believe as humans, we're not really built to, to necessarily deal with all that, mm -hmm. whether it's all love or all hate. I don't think that, I think our, our purpose here is to, um, to uh, re reflect his light, not necessarily absorb it. And so, um, and because it happened to me so late in life, um, I needed to get used to now this new reality of my life of uh, attention and criticism. And uh, when I'm, you know, just started designing like, you know, six years ago, six or seven years ago, and I'm, you know, learning in front of the world, so to speak. And so, um, um, yeah, it's just a lot to, to adjust to the, the expectations of, of um, uh, the expectations that we put on ourselves, the expectations of, of the world that we uh, take on that we probably shouldn't. Um, and um, I, I, my wife, she's gonna watch this and kill me. I'm, I'm no way in the world comparing myself to Jordan, but I just remember him on the couch and he's just like, you don't want this light. You know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't want this, um, uh, the, the weight of this. And I think, um, you know, um, being able to, have faith um, in God is the one thing that allows you to deal with um, a lot of the intangibles and things that come up during this walk um, that you don't prepare for. Mm. You know, you you, you kind of prepare for everything else, and you prepare for um, you know how the how the world is going to consume your ideas, but you don't necessarily prepare for all the the intangibles outside of that you know so how so, do you do, deal with criticism does it bother you does it affect you when a complete stranger um sends a a, a, a comment online or does it bother you when you get a bad review how, yeah. how does things affect you along the way I'm, I'm 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 really bad at it and so i just block people you know it's just <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reality, man. Like, you know, my, at the end of the day, like, I, I know that I, I, I don't have, I'm not in the best place to always consume all that negativity. And um, with, with all due respect, you know, say what you want on any other platform, but, you know, coming on my personal social media, like page or something and saying something negative, I don't have the, uh, God hasn't necessarily given me the patience, I, I guess, to, 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 to deal with some of that stuff. And so the criticism, I, 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 I'm not the best at it. You know, I'm not the best in, in, in how I deal with it. And so I try and safeguard myself as much as possible, whether that's blocking people, whether that's not following other things or watching how I consume or download or, 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 or receive information or, you know, whether it's certain uh, television shows or however, just really safeguarding, you know, your eyes and ears um, and uh, really being proactive about um, uh, the random information that's not about you. And then also the criticism that is about you um, really making sure that, you know, you're in a, you're in a place to, um, to be protected from that. So. No, that's so good. You know, we've been talking about fear of God, but I really want to talk to you about the most important thing in your life. And cause I know fear of God's important, but it's really secondary. 
you're married to Des. You have three <laughs> amazing kids. You have uh, you, you have your son Jerry playing baseball. You have twin daughters. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you're learning about being a, a better husband and what you're learning about being a, a great dad, because I know you are. Uh, I, I'm, I've learned during this time that, you know, with the, and I, and I hate that this perspective has come at the expense of so many people getting sick and some people passing away. Um, and I hate that um, it took uh, some of these dark times to, um, to get clarity and to change our optics. Um, but I'm learning that, you know, um, I can never get enough of this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay being home every day, all day. And, you know, I've been on a plane um, so much the past three or four years and um, really swamped at work and not at home. And um, I'm, I'm so good right now. Like I'm not itching to get back on a plane at all. I'm not itching to, um, you know, I've got my home office here set up here and um, um, even though my focus is, uh, is is on the vision that God has given me, um, I'm I'm so present and appreciative of of this moment to be with my family and um, and I'm so okay with it, you know. And I'm um, I'm you know I I I I tell was telling my wife I feel guilty that um, that I've worked so hard to now be in a place where this pandemic hits and financially I'm a I'm in a place where I can keep my staff on payroll, po payroll, even though we're losing money, and I can afford, um, you know, to, to, to pay our our house note and our bills. And I feel guilty about being in a in a place that I've worked hard to be in, but I'm I'm so grateful, you know, because I can be in this place and I can, you know, obviously the future is where it's a little uncertain for everyone, but but I'm okay and I'm able to be present which I've, I've been home, you know, off a plane and I haven't been able to be present because I would come home and I'm thinking about, you know, getting on the next plane a week later or what I have to do now that I'm only home for a week and I have to take advantage of everything that the office needs here in Los Angeles. And to be home without the, uh, without another trip looming or like um, these responsibilities looming has been a blessing that, um, I mean, I can really just, I can get used to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'm, I'm really good being at home. So, um, <laughs> um, I, I, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. And, um, I, I'm, I'm closer, uh, to my family than I've ever been. I feel like I know my kids better than I've ever known them. And so, um, it's, it's, it's been a good time. It's been a time that I'll forever cherish, you know, it's just the longest Christmas break, um, for us, so. That's beautiful, well don't feel guilty. We're really proud of you. And we celebrate your success and every, every good thing that has come your way. And we know, also know that you're doing a lot of good in the world. And, uh, and think about how your discipline, your creativity, uh, your sense of vision right now is providing jobs for your staff. And they don't have to worry about, they're present right now um, because of the difficult decisions you've made and to create this space. So I, I just want to celebrate that. But I'm going to ask you, I don't know, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's one thing you've done in the last uh, two months during the pandemic that um, to, to, for, te, for Des that she just loved? Uh, other than being home every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here every day. Um, I, 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 think she, I think she really just loves the fact that, I, that I'm here every day. There's, there's some, I mean, she pretty much runs the homeschool. Uh, there's some times <laughs> where... I'll, I'll hop outside and, 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 and help, help Jerry out with math or for a little bit. And she's super grateful of that. Um, but I think just this time, uh, being home and, and being present and, and, and being able to have conversations that we wouldn't have, have normally had the time to have, um, and, and being able to go deeper within the relationship, um, has, has really just been a, been a blessing. And so I think, you know, uh, when this hit, you know, I was really stressed with, um, okay, I, I, I really want to make sure that I can get, you know, whatever God is, is, is giving me through this crisis, you know, like, what, what are you giving me through this crisis? And the, the first areas that I looked to were my marriage and, and my kids. And I've been focused on making sure that 
um, those areas are getting stronger now that I've been afforded the, um, the not, not afforded, because I feel like we've always had the time, but I've been forced. You know, I don't want to say afforded. We've, I've always had the time to do those things. And I just, now, now with new optics and new perspective, I realize how important they are and how easy it will be in the future to make the time. Um, but it kind of took this um, crisis happening to, um, to force us to confront some things that are easy, easily um, um, kind of avoided otherwise. Yeah. So give me two or three takeaways that you feel like God has given you through the pandemic you're going to take with you when the quarantine's over. Um, I would give you two or three, but I think, I think it's just vision, man. I, I think it all comes down to vision. And he's given me vision of where I am to lead this family, where I am to lead my company. Mm. And that vision is enough to sustain Christ. That vision is enough to uh, sustain hardship. That vision is enough to, uh, to have a, um, a positive outlook when, when, when times are, are, uh, are, are stressful. Mm. And um, I think, um, one of the things that um, one of the things that um, prevent us from seeing is is seeing too much, and so my my screen time on my phone has gone down forty percent. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know I'm, I'm not consuming in the way that I used to, and I'm uh, really in a space where I'm trying to hear hear from him uh, in a, in a in a different way, and in hearing from him in the, in this newer more intimate way the vision of where he wants to take me has become more clear and what as that vision becomes more and more clear you know the discipline and the competitive nature of my life just fall into place and support kind of where uh, where i believe he's taken me and so it's easy to stay disciplined it's easy to, to still get up early and and work out and and, and, and do the things that I, that I need to do um, because he has blessed me with this vision of, uh, of where he's taking me. That's so good. Well, I don't mind just having one takeaway. Vision is a, a great takeaway. Vision for your life, for your family, as a dad, uh, for your company. Um, it, it's, it's a really powerful thing when you have a, a deep conviction that God has poured into you a picture of a future you're supposed to create and a person that you're supposed to become. And, uh, you know, Jerry, uh, I, I want to wrap things up, but... Um, there are a lot of artists listening right now and, and a lot of them are leaning in going, can you give me one, uh, and it may be vision, but can you, can you give me one um, insight to helping me generate my own creativity at a higher level? And what would you say to them? Uh, I'd say it, I, I would argue that creativity is as needed as the rest of the essentials that we're calling essential at this moment. You know, with, without hope and uh, inspiration, um, uh, what is humanity? You know, we, we weren't created just to work and eat and sleep. You know what I mean? And it's 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 the artist's responsibility to inspire and to um, uh, uh, create from conviction and intention. And um, uh, the market doesn't decide or determine. Uh, whether your gifts or what you have to propose to the world is valid. It's, it's, it's what you have to say that determines that. And your gift will make room for you. What you have to say, if it's rooted in honesty and intention, will, will make room for you. And so it's really a time to, um, to dig deep and, and, and find the vision that, that God has given you and um, know that what he's given you is as necessary as as water is as necessary as shelter is as necessary as all these other things that are being called uh, essential and we're all valid you know whether you're on the front lines and thank god for those people on the front lines um but god is gifted and um given us all purpose here and and it's all necessary to to move forward um his kingdom and so uh, i just want to encourage um the creatives and uh, the business leaders and the future leaders and um, the mothers and the fathers um, um, that what you have to give the world is, is, is as needed um, as, as any other um, role, position, job um, that's out there. 
you know, and, and he's all gifted us equally based on, um, based on what he needs from us. Um, and, and whatever he's gifted us is more than enough to keep you going. Whatever he's given you to say or whatever you have to say is, is, is more than enough to, um, to keep you going. And, um, you know, where you are right now is, is so far from, from where God wants to take you. And I feel like that, you know, no matter whose shoes you're in, you know, I, I look at myself and I, uh, what could, what could look like success to someone else. I feel like this is far from where, where, where God wants to take me. Um, and that doesn't mean a, a growing business and that doesn't mean more sales and more, uh, uh, a, a larger, um, brand, so to speak. It, it just means, um, the, the growth, um, as, as a person. Um, and, um, uh, I think there's a lot of growth that's happening in this tough time and just praying that everyone gets, gets the growth and, 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 and gets the compounded years of wisdom that are happening right now. It's like this, you know, you, you get 20 or 30 years of wisdom in this two month period. Um, if you're just still and quiet enough to, to hear what he has to say. So good. And, and just, um, I know there's some of my friends that are watching who are artists and creatives, but they're, um, they're not yet followers of Jesus and they're just still trying to figure out the whole God thing. And, and, uh, you know, could I ask you, like, um, what, what would you say to them about what you've learned about who Jesus is in your own life personally? Oh, man, I, 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 I don't know if there's anything I could say to them. I, I think I would, I would hope that my life is, is something that you could look to and, and, and hopefully I, I, I can be an example of his love. And I, I don't know that I have uh, the ability to say anything that could change uh their lives, but hopefully, but the way that I live my life could um, encourage them to um, make the changes or, or, or look to the one that created them to direct them. And I think one of the things that I found in my relationship with him is I've been blessed with, um, with direction and again, blessed with, with, with vision. And so um, uh, we're all so consumed with uh, so much information and uh, so much, uh, uh, so many posts and nuggets and, um, you know, but at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, it's our life's work that really, um, become the, uh, example that, um, inspire people to make changes and to, um, uh, you know, redirect their life. It's a, I, I love the answer. And I want you to know that your life is so reflecting, uh, the, the compassion and passion of Jesus, the artistry and beauty of God and, and how he created us, um, in, in such an extraordinary way, you know, I, I, I you are a reminder to me that we've uh, we've been imagined to imagine, created to create, that mm -hmm. we're all works of art and artists at work. And uh, yeah. Jerry, um, I love that you're you and your family are a part of the Mosaic family. Um, I, I love that you're a part of our family, and um, and I just want to thank you so much for taking time to share some of your life and 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 some of your experience. Uh, what I what I think is so powerful about moments like this and times like um, this where you share and people like you share is that you help us accelerate our growth. When you share your experiences, when you share your success and failures, when you share the insights and wisdom you've learned, you actually help um, everyone who's listening um, accelerate their own growth to moving toward their vision and having more courage and confidence to pursue the calling that God has on their life. And so I wanna thank you for the contribution you've made tonight to Mosaic to everyone on team night and to everyone around the world who's listening. And I want you to know we're praying for you and we love you so much. Yeah, we, we love you. And, and, and I, I, you know, I, I feel the same exact way, you know, about you and your family and, and, and everything that mosaic represents and, and stands on in a, in a city of pretentiousness in the middle of Hollywood um, um, to understand the atmosphere and the environment of the city, but still represent um this authenticity mm -hmm. and the warmth um, and, and this love that um, is so clearly um, uh, from above um, has really been a blessing. And I, you know, so grateful for you guys and um, can never repay the, the way that you guys love on us and take care of us. So um, yeah, uh, just wanted to say thank you to you too and happy to, to get on here and, and, and catch up with you face to face, even though there's a bunch of people tuning in. It's, Good to 
just talk to you and see you, man. So, um, you know, humble to be here. So appreciate it. Love you, bro. Hey, have a great night. Say hi to the family. I will, man. You do the same. All right. Love you. Blessings.